Good afternoon and welcome to my hobby bitch. In my hands I have this Fitzpatrick 61 engine that Chris from Tennessee has uh, allowed me to run several times and he's also allowed me to do a quick look inside of this engine so that's what we're going to do today. Now those of you that have been following the engine runs of this engine realize or might recall that the last run I did with this was with FAI fuel which is a good thing for many reasons. There's not any nitro left in it, so any residual oil that's in here is not gonna be, or residue that's in this engine is not going to be a cause for concern for rusting the bearings because there's no nitro in the fuel at all to cause that. So, let's start by finding the correct size SAE wrench for this engine because this is an American made engine therefore it's SAE connectors so it looks like or yeah, SAE fasteners looks like 764 is going to be the one for that front housing wow that front housing screw is not really all that tight that's weird and the top also yes okay so all we're gonna do here is take the front housing off the rear cover and the head off and I just have to make sure that I keep this thing right in here so as I just said this was interesting um, this wasn't even really tight that fastener wasn't really tight at all on there I just barely even touched it now you might recall from the quick look video that this carb is an integrated part of this casting Therefore, it cannot leak, therefore, it cannot come off. But, you can see in here, I've got a slightly different light now. I've got, between, I've got the two side lights and then I've got another light that's trying to shine as directly down as possible. It says FSR ABC Schnurly USA. So, that one felt reasonably tight <clears throat> so I really enjoyed running this engine this thing was fantastic to run I think the last run when or runs I did in the one video with FAI was interesting because of the fact that it just simply did not want to start by hand with FAI fuel which I am 90% certain that it's simply just because of the fact that the nitro in the fuel before really is a, a catalyst for good starting. Wow, check that out. Now the question is here, did this even have a gasket or was it machined so well like older OS engines? It looks like that might be a gasket on there. So I'm not going to touch it, I'm not going to mess with it. Here's what, oh that's interesting, here's what the inside of this looks like. Hopefully this other light I've got going here, you can kind of see this. There is some stuff on the counterbalance here. I don't know, I don't know that I would call that rust. Or just some kind of I don't know maybe that is light rust formation on the back of that let's go here with this rear cover it might be a little bit of light rust on that uh, it doesn't feel like rust it doesn't feel like anything it just looks like a little bit of discoloring of the uh, counterweight it doesn't feel like rust rust if you've got an issue with rust, you certainly should be able to feel it. <clears throat> and I am not feeling anything that feels like rust on that. So I don't really know what term I would use for what I'm seeing there. Now if you're really interested, go and look at the Clarence Lee review article on this because he always disassembles these engines and many times he gives a little bit better images of the 
things. Now, before I take all these screws out, I want to see. I, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell or not. Maybe I'm seeing an optical illusion. I thought it looked like these um, cooling fins heads in here. I thought, or the fins. I thought it looked like they weren't <clears throat> symmetrical. But I think it's just an angle you look at because at first I thought when I was outside looking at it while I was still in the stand, I looked like one side, the front was deeper and it kind of went swept up like this. But now that I look at this, it looks like it's just, you know, a round tool that just went straight in. So I don't believe that what I thought I was seeing outside was is correct. It was just an optical illusion. It wouldn't make any sense where, that they would cut the front or the rear deeper than the other side. It just doesn't make machining sense, nor does it make cooling sense from my limited information on that. So that, okay, so this is just a little gasket from the glow plug. So <clears throat> apparently this is a button style head. I'm trying to remember what other engines had this type of style head where you've actually got a little button here. Uh, some Fox? No, I don't recall. I've seen other engines that had this style of head here where you just have a little button that comes out like that. And this is really a nice thing, at least if this would have been really, really mass produced because then if somebody would have uh, stripped out the glow plug head, well, you're in luck. <clears throat> Instead of having to buy a whole new head, you just have to replace this little bu button. Now, it does look like there's a shim on here, which I'm not going to remove. I'm not going to do a whole lot of anything here. Um, I might see if I can get a bamboo stick to stick in there and see if that sleeve wants to come up, but if it doesn't, I'm not going to force it. I might actually have to... See, I'm not really doing a complete disassembly of this thing, so I don't really... A lot of times I just use a bamboo stick to kind of start pushing that sleeve up. It doesn't look like that's what's going to happen this time, but that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and remove this front housing now. So as you can see here, bring the piston up to top dead center. Use the clean end of this towel. A light caramel coloring there just on the exhaust side. Let's see if I, how much of that I can just wipe off. Not much really, a little bit. <clears throat> Actually, looks like I might have been getting a little bit more. Yeah, not much there really to take off. Alright, let's pop this front housing off real quick. So this was the screw that was already loose, which is weird. I don't, didn't notice any kind of leakage there while I was doing the run. Okay, so here's our front housing. This was the thing I wanted to show you that I thought was interesting from the clearance lee review. I'm going to re-oil all these parts up. It, it does look like there's little thin gaskets here, which are nice gaskets. <coughs> so I won't have to be replacing those or worry about <coughs> those getting damaged. 
But this was the interesting part of the Clarence Lee review is that this um, crankshaft has cutouts in here, but then they filled that opening. So this is all one thing, and then they just, I don't know how they milled this out and left a ring unless this ring is another separate part that goes around it. I'm not certain. I'm sure Clarence Lee probably mentions that, but uh, they filled this with some kind of epoxy. Why they filled it, I don't know, but I don't know if it was because they still needed some extra weight in the counterbalance or if they were, I don't know what, I don't recall what the rationale was for doing that. But uh, here's our piston. <clears throat> Oil hole, you can see. Should be able to very clearly see the oil hole there for the crank pin. And let's see here. This is the rear. Just trying to see if there's any kind of marking on here. Looked like there was a scribe mark. Yeah, there's a R. Oh boy, that's real faint. That's real faint. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that or not. There's a R scribed on that for rear and then here I don't know machining lingo or those things but you can see these swirling marks from where the the tool was cutting this connecting rod so basically that's all I'm going to disassemble on this Fitzpatrick 61 engine I'm just gonna get some 3-in-1 oil lube this thing up and put it all back together but Chris again thank you very much for the opportunity to feature your engine on this channel it's been a pleasure and I'm sure that all the viewers and subscribers have thoroughly enjoyed watching all these run videos and hopefully they'll enjoy seeing this one too so again thank you Chris in Tennessee for allowing me to do this I will put this engine back together and get it sent back to you. Thank you all for watching.